Welcome! In today's module, we will be discussing accessibility in an online and hybrid course. As you go through the development of your courses, you always want to keep accessibility in mind in both the face-to-face -face and online components. You want to make sure that the course design reflects a commitment to accessibility so that all learners can access all course content and its activities. In addition, you want to make sure that it reflects a commitment to the usability so that all learners can access and navigate and interact with the course components. We often answer questions from faculty such as, why do I have to make my course accessible if I don't have a student who currently needs an accommodation? The simple and short answer is, it's the law. Remember, accessibility is a civil rights law that involves Section 504 and 508. In particular, Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act establishes requirements for electronic information to be accessible to individuals with disabilities. UTRGV is a Quality Matters subscribing institution. And as such, throughout each module, you have been addressing certain standards. For example, in the Accessibility Standard, we will be addressing General Standard 8. As a recap to General Standard 8, you want to make sure that your course employs accessible technologies. It provides equivalent alternative information to auditory or visual content. The course design facilitates readability and minimizes distractions. In addition, you want the course design to accommodate the use of assistive technologies such as screen readers. I do have to state up front, as a disclaimer, meeting Quality Matters Standard 8 does not guarantee or imply that you have met the federal, state, or local regulations. If you're not sure that your course is in compliant, what we recommend is that you meet with the accessibility specialist to ensure that all regulations are met. When creating your course material and even designing your course layout, what you want to keep in mind is universal design for learning. In fact, Quality Matters rubric was designed based off of UDL. When designing your course, you want to go ahead and keep in mind universal design for learning and its three major components. One of these components is the recognition network. This is the what of learning. Do you present information and content in different ways? That's one question you want to keep in mind when you're creating your material. Another component is strategic networks. This is the how of learning. Do you differentiate the ways that students can express what they know? Do you provide multiple means of expression? And last, effective networks. This is the why of learning. Do you stimulate interest and motivate your learners? Do you provide multiple means of engagement throughout your course? You want to keep all these questions in mind when creating the material. You want to keep in mind the difference between accommodation and modification. An accommodation is an alteration of the environment, curriculum, format, or equipment that allows the individual with special needs to gain access to the content. For example, do you provide captioning? It's the same content, but you are just altering the environment by providing captionings to perhaps a video that you, you may require. A modification is a change in the curriculum made for an individual with special needs who is unable to comprehend all of the content an instructor is teaching. For example, if you require your students to submit a 30-page research paper and you have a student with the need of a special modification, Perhaps this student, instead of turning in a 30-page research paper, may create some form of video blog. Same content, same material, same goals, learning objectives are reached. However, the delivery method is different. So this is a modification to the curriculum itself based on an individual basis. For faculty members who are using the flip classroom style, you may encounter some challenges at first. Lack of a definition of what flipped classroom really means is perhaps number one. Clarity in the purpose of the structure when it comes to designing assignments. This is very important because students need to see what the value of both in and out of class learning experiences are. The challenge of how to adjust the new roles of both faculty and student in a flipped environment. The key to help your students adjust in a flipped environment is to become a facilitator for the student. 
When using a flipped classroom approach, you still have to keep accessibility and universal design for learning in mind. Both approaches emphasize the importance of intentionally designing a course interactions around the learner's needs. With their goals of enhancing learning, increasing student engagement, connecting students with the course material, and allowing learners to demonstrate their skills in supported and varied ways. Let's take a look at the Flip Classroom model and UDL. As you can see, you have several different options in incorporating each network. For example, Effective Network, the Y of learning. You can easily use game simulations, experiments, or art activities. Concept Exploration, or the Recognition Network. You can utilize video lectures, online chats, audio lectures. Now this is just some examples of what you can incorporate when creating your online course and course materials. In the strategic network, the how of learning, you can have your students do some blogging. You can also incorporate reflective podcasts and the traditional tests. In addition, in the strategic network areas, you can include creative personalized projects and presentations. Now, once you have decided on the course material that you will be using, how do you make it accessible? For example, if you are going to require your students to view a video and then take a test, how would you make a video accessible? Well, you would add captioning to that or perhaps provide a transcript. If you are having your students download some form of documentation, how do you make documentation accessible? You need to make sure that when working with documents, slides, forms, sites, virtual classrooms, and YouTube videos, that they are all accessible. And the slide does say flip classroom. However, this is applicable to both the online component and face-to-face -face component. For our purposes, we are going to start off with perhaps the most widely used of the files here, which are Word documents. How would you make a Word document accessible? We have this wonderful infographic that Portland Community College has graciously allowed us to use, and it is the anatomy of an accessible page. This is a simple syllabus, a Word document, and as you can see, it is broken down into components that need to be addressed when creating an accessible file. When creating a Word document, you want to go ahead and use the styles and the built-in tools available in Microsoft Word. We will cover each component on how to make an accessible page in our live demonstration. Thank you for joining us, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your instructional designer or anyone here at Colt. Thank you.